Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In the previous video, we have uh, studied about two lemmas relating to the null space and the range space for a compact operator and a chain associated with it. Now in this video, we shall be learning about again the null space and range space of the same compact linear operator defined on a normed space. But in this case, we are going to define a re relationship between the null space and range space and about the index where uh, this chain is ending. So that means uh, the index where the null spaces for the operator and the range spaces for the operator, they are equal to each other. So if you remember in the previous video about the null spaces, what we have studied about the null spaces, we have studied that for a given complex number, which uh, depends uh, on, for a given complex number, which is non-zero, the compact linear operator, which is defined on a normed space, follow this expression. The null spaces follow this expression that the null space of t lambda 0 is contained in the null space of t lambda raised to power 1 that is contained in the null space of t lambda raised to power 2 and so on and all these are proper and after this index r all the null spaces they are equal to each other and for the range space we have studied that all the range spaces uh, where the containment in this case is the opposite we have t lambda raised to power 0 on x that means the range space or the identity operator defined on x then the range space of t lambda then the range space of t lambda square and so on they uh, they are uh, all properly containing each other in this case and after the index q we have all the range spaces which are equal to each other so here this theorem gives us a relationship ab about this index n is equal to r which is the smallest index in case of null space and n is equal to q which is the smallest index in case of range space. So according to this theorem, this theorem here tells us that this smallest integer is actually the same. So what does that mean? It means that after this index r, all the null spaces are all, all also equal and as well as well as all the range spaces, they are also equal to each other. And moreover, until this index, all the null spaces, they are contained in each other and all the range spaces, they are containing each other. So this is what this theorem tells us. So here we'll make use of the those two previous lemmas in order to prove this result. Okay, so for the proof, what we have to show, we have to show that this index is basically the same. So, uh, w what we already know, we have defined the index r in case of null spaces where uh, from that index onwards all the null spaces they are equal and for the case of range space we have defined the index q such that all the range spaces after this index they are all equal, right? So, in this case we have to show that q is equal to r. This is our aim for the present uh, proof, right? And this containment and the containment of the null space, they have already been proved in the previous two lemmas, right? So we are just required to prove that the index Q that is equal to the index R, the index for range space that is equal to the index for the null space. So we'll break the proof into two parts. In the first part, we'll be proving that Q is greater than or equal to R. And in the second part, we'll be proving that Q is less than or equal to R. Simple. So let's proceed on to prove our first part, Q greater than or equal to R. So let's see how we can do that. So for, for the sake of convenience, we are defining the notations like this, the null space for the operator t lambda raised to power n. We are defining that to be n subscript small n and the range spaces for the operator t lambda raised to power n that is defined by r of n. So this is the notation that we are using throughout this proof. Okay, so here for part a, we are required to prove that q is greater than or equal to r. 
right so for that we'll proceed by the process of contradiction right the proof is somewhat lengthy but that's okay so let's see where uh, we have uh, we will go we have to prove that q is greater than equal to r this is the, what we have to prove right what does that mean that means that after the index r we are getting some index q such that the range spaces would be great, uh, equal to uh, uh, each other after this index q right so here we will prove that the null space n q plus 1 is equal to n q we already know that r is that smallest integer for which from that index onwards all the null spaces they are equal to each other so if we prove that n q plus 1 is equal to n q the null space q plus 1 is equal to the null space n q so that would imply that q is that index which is lying after this index r so in this case q would be greater than the index r so this would prove our result so before proving this thing we are required to have a result so let's prove a very small result first which we shall use in the proof next onwards uh, in the proof later right so uh, using the above lemma here because q is the smallest integer such that all the range spaces are equal thereafter so that means r q plus 1 is equal to r q because q is that smallest integer if that is so what is r q plus 1 uh, uh, what is the relationship of r q plus 1 with r q it is uh, basically we have these these operators t lambda raised to power 0 t lambda raised to power 1 t lambda raised to power 2 and so on so when we talk about t lambda raised to power q so of x so we are talking about the range space r q when we apply t lambda one more time to it so it would be t lambda raised to power q plus 1 times of x so this is the range space r q plus 1 right so for this range space uh, we we can write t lambda of r q is equal to r q so that means whenever we have y taken from r q so t lambda so y so that y could be written as t lambda of x where x is again a member of r of q right from this relation so let's mark this as equation number 5 now next we will show that t lambda of x is zero whenever x is taken from r q that would imply that that element x is itself zero so we'll we shall be using this result later on in the proof you'll see that in a moment so uh, for the time being we have to prove this thing so assume uh, that this thing is not true we'll proceed through the uh, process of contradiction so we assume that equation 6 does not hold so that means whenever we have this condition t lambda of x is equal to 0 we have x as non zero so that means say this thing is true for some x1 so we have t lambda x1 equal to 0 where x1 itself belongs to r q and it and that is itself non zero right this is not e exactly equal to zero now using the equation number 5 here so we have if y is equal to x1 x1 is coming from r q right y is again coming from r q so x1 could now be written as t lambda x2 where x2 is another member of r q using the same logic here because q is that smallest integer for which r q plus 1 is equal to r q right so that means for some non zero member here x1 we have x2 such that x2 is coming from r q again because x2 is coming from r q we can write again using this logic of equation number 5 we can again write x2 as t lambda of x3 where x3 is again a member of r q so we can again apply the logic of equation number 5 so that means we can write x3 as t lambda times x4 and we can proceed like this such that for every n by substitution 
we have uh, x which is say here this member is x1 which is non zero right uh, so this x1 could be written as t lambda of x2 this uh, could be written as t lambda x2 would be written as t lambda of x3 so this would ultimately become t lambda square of t lambda square of x3 and we can proceed like this we uh, finally will reach at t lambda raised to power n minus 1 x n right but here you can see that t lambda x1 is equal to 0 because this 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 is what we have assumed in the starting and moreover t lambda raised to power n of xn is also 0 if this is so so in that case from this we can see that xn is a member which belongs to because you have t lambda raised to power n of xn is equal to 0. So that means this xn would belong to the null space for the operator t lambda raised to power n. So we are, we are writing this to be n, n, right? So this xn belongs to n, n. But from this expression, because we have from this expression here, this thing is not equal to 0. So we have t lambda raised to power n minus 1 times of xn that is not equal to 0. So from this expression, we can clearly see that xn, this does not belong to the null space of t lambda raised to power n minus 1. So this xn does not belong to the null space of n, n minus 1, but this belongs to the null space of n, n right so from this expression here because xn is not a member of n n minus 1 but xn is a member of n n so that implies n n minus 1 is contained in n n why because here we are assuming that r is that smallest integer such that the, all the null spaces they are properly contained in each other right so n n minus 1 is contained in n n but from here what do we have so you see the lemma here gives us a contradiction because all the null spaces they are properly contained in each other and here from this expression we are getting a contradiction because we are saying there is a member x n which is not there in the smaller space but that is present in the bigger space right but that could not be true therefore we reach at a contradiction because the index n was chosen as an arbitrary index so whatever we have assumed about equation number six here is not true so that means equation six has to be true so if this is true that means whenever we have uh, t lambda x is equal to zero where x is a member of r q in that case x itself is a zero so we have this result. Now we can use this result to prove further the main result. So for the main result, as I have told you, we are required to prove that the null space Q plus one is equal to the null space Q, right? So here R is the smallest integer for which this equality occurs. So here we are required to prove this equality so because uh, using the lemma on null spaces we already know nq is contained in nq plus 1 right we are required to prove that nq plus 1 is contained in nq this is obtained through the lemma on proper containment about the null spaces so we are required to prove that nq plus 1 is contained in nq so what does that mean it means that if we take some member here in this space so that member would automatically be present in this null space n q so what does that mean we it means that if we take x from n q plus 1 so what does that mean it means t lambda of q plus 1 when applied on x has to be equal to 0 so 
this thing should imply that x belongs to n q so what does that mean we have to prove that t lambda of q when applied on to x is also equal to 0 so we are assuming that t lambda of q plus 1 is equal to 0 here also we should have x this is equal to 0 this should imply that t lambda q of x is equal to 0 right this is what we have to prove here so we assume that the result is not true by saying that what do i mean i mean that if we assume this thing this thing does not occur right so let's assume that there is some uh, element x not for this uh, for uh, for this element the result here is not true so that means we have some element y such that t lambda q x 0 that is not equal to 0 but t lambda y is equal to 0. That means this thing is not equal to 0 but this thing is equal to 0 for this element x 0 here right. If that is so this element y t lambda raised to power q x 0 that belongs to rq this element y is itself non-zero from here and t lambda of y is equal to zero this is according to the result that we have proved earlier in this equation number six here right so moving on further so we have an element y such that t lambda y is equal to 0 but that element itself is not 0. So this gives us a contradiction to the result of equation 6 because it tells us that the member here has to be 0 because whenever we have t lambda x equal to 0 and x is the member of r q then this element x has to be 0 but we are getting a non-zero number here that is y. So whatever we have assumed is not true if that is so. So in that case this thing is true right. If this is true using the method of contradiction that means the null space q plus 1 is contained in the null space n q. So in that case uh, because we have this uh, containment and moreover through the lemma we have the containment nq is contained in nq plus 1 the lower index null space is contained in the higher index null space therefore using both of these we have this equality here and if we have this equality because r is that smallest integer for which we have this equality so that means the index here q has to be greater than r so we so, suppose we have 1, 2, 3 and so on, uh, so on up to r. So we should have q somewhere here. So q index is obviously greater than the index r. So this is proving the first part. Now we have to prove the second part where we have to prove q is less than equal to r. Right. So here uh, how do we proceed? Let's have a look. So if q is equal to 0 then we have r greater than equal to 0 so that is true there is no issue in that because what was q q was the smallest integer for which the range spaces were equal from that index onwards all the range spaces were equal so this is true there is no issue so we can assume that q is greater than equal to 1 now because we are required to prove that q is less than equal to r so what do we require? We, we are required to prove that nq minus 1 that is a proper subspace of nq. So to prove that q is less than or equal to r we are required to prove that nq minus 1 that is a proper subspace of nq. Right? Because in this case r is the smallest integer such that nn is equal to n n plus 1. You see in this case because r is the smallest integer such that all the null spaces thereafter they are equal to each other. So if we are to prove that q index is smaller than this index r so basically we have to prove that the space n q minus 1 
is contained in nq why this is so because uh, we have the index nr somewhere here and from this index onwards all the null spaces they are equal to each other right so that means before this all the null spaces they are properly contained in each other so this is what we will prove here in this case so according to this lemma here all the range spaces they are properly containing each other and q is that smallest integer such that from that index onwards all the range spaces they are equal to each other so from here we obtain that rq is properly contained in rq minus 1 this the, this containment is proper here in this case correct so what do we do in order to prove that this n q minus 1 that is contained in n q so we'll prove that there is a member uh, there is a member here such that that is not present in n q minus 1 because you see if we create a uh, if we have a null space here n q which is bigger so we would have a null space here which is n q minus 1 so it will contain so, so there will be some member here say x so this member is there in n q but not there in n q minus 1 so we'll prove the result in this manner only that we'll prove that we have an element here which is present in n q but that is not present in n q minus 1 right so let's have a look so now we are saying the containment R Q is contained in R Q minus one. This is a proper containment. So that means if R Q is properly contained in this, so that means we would certainly have a, an element Y or any element. So let's call it as Y, which is present in their difference. So that means if you have R Q here, this is R Q and this is R, uh, not this, say this is R Q minus this is rq minus 1 and this is rq because rq minus 1 is greater space right so uh, because they are properly containing each other so we would say there is surely an element here so let's call this element as y so let's call this as y y is uh, present in the difference so that means y is present in rq minus 1 but y is not present in rq if y is present in rq minus 1 that means y is nothing but t lambda raised to power q minus 1 times x where x is some other element present in present in the normed space x right so when you apply t lambda onto this y so what do you have you you have you can substitute the value for y so it is here so you have t lambda q raised to uh, t lambda raised to power q of x now this is some member of rq obviously and this rq is equal to rq plus 1 why because q is that smallest integer and from this index onwards all the range spaces they are equal to each other so that means we have started from t lambda y this t lambda y is contained in rq plus 1 so that means this t lambda y could now be written as t lambda raised to power q plus 1 of z for some in index z here right so here what do we have we have t lambda raised to power q of z that is a member of rq but y is not a member of rq right so using this thing so just forget everything just focus here that we have this result now what do we require to prove we are required to prove that nq minus 1 is contained in nq so we are taking some element x minus t lambda z this element would not be there in nq minus 1 but would be there in nq let's see how if this element x minus t lambda z is not there in nq minus 1 what does that mean it means that this thing has to be 0 when you apply t lambda q minus 1 onto this element this has to be non-zero in that case only we can say it is not present in the null space of nq minus 1 right so let's solve this thing and see what do we have here so when you apply t lambda q raised to power 
t lambda raised to power q minus 1 times x this is the first member and then you apply this on the second member it would be t lambda raised to power q times of z so what is this this is y by definition you see this is y right and what is the second member t lambda uh, raised to power q of z so obviously here y is not member of rq and this is a member of rq and because both of them they are not equal to each other so their difference is also not equal to zero so from here we have obtained that t lambda raised to power q minus 1 of the element t minus t lambda z this thing is not equal to zero if that is so the element t minus x minus t lambda z this does not belong to the null space of q minus 1 right so this is one thing next we are saying this element would be there in the null space of n q let's see how so when you apply t lambda q uh, t lambda is to power q onto this element we will obtain zero let's see how so when you solve you have t lambda is to power q of x and then you have t lambda raised to power q plus 1 of z here, right? So you can write this thing as this thing, no issue. And what is this? t lambda raised to power q plus 1 times z. Let's have a look here. So this thing is equal to t lambda y. So this is t lambda y. And the first thing here, t lambda raised to power q minus 1 of x, that is also y right so this thing is t lambda of y so you have t lambda y minus t lambda y that is equal to zero so from here we have obtained that t lambda raised to power q of x minus t lambda z that is equal to zero so that means the element x minus t lambda z that is contained in the null space of n q so you see from this result here and this result here this one and this one we can say that the x minus t lambda z is not a member of n q minus 1 but it is a member of n q so that means n q minus 1 is properly contained in n q if that is so the index q is less than equal to r because r is the only in smallest integer for uh, from um, from this index onwards all the null spaces they are equal to each other so if uh, we have a proper containment that means the index has to be less than this index r so using uh, this inequality here and the inequality which we have proved in part a we have q is equal to r and this is what we were required to prove here in this case so uh, in this theorem, we have proved that this index here, where uh, the null spaces and the range spaces, both of them, they are equal to each other for a given lambda and for a given compact linear operator defined on a normed space, they are equal to each other. So I hope you understood this concept and theorem well. Well, that is it for this video. Thank you for watching.